Okay, so let's start to uh, get into some painting here. I'm going to grab that image that I projected, like so. And as you can see, it's on a transparent background. And I need a little bit more. I need the UV borders and I need the wireframe. So we can do this a couple ways. We can do it, do it the traditional way where we just go into Maya, take a UV snapshot and build it from there. Or we can go back into Mari and right click, go to patches. And I don't know if you guys can see this. Let's do it from up here. You can actually do UV mask to image manager and UV wireframe to image manager. Uh, these are relatively new and uh, pretty awesome. And as you see, I've already done this for both. And what it does, it goes to your it goes to your image manager and writes out a perfect UV mask and wireframe, which is fantastic. So I'm going to take these. And I'm going to save them in a folder. so I can pick them up in Photoshop. Like so. I'll go back here and grab both of these. And from here, I'm actually going to move them into my... Oh, so this is a common thing that gets overlooked. Um, I thought I had a 4K image for my eyes, uh, but it turns out that it's only 2K. At this point in the process, it's, a, it's actually okay because we're not actually going to be using any of these textures, so the stuff that we projected is, is throwaway. It's just replacement. So at this point, I can actually go in and just resize my TIFF to fit the proper dimensions and then slide these in here. So uh, sometimes I get tripped up by that. I don't know why because um, I thought I imported everything. I opened up the scene as a brand new scene with everything as 4K but sometimes it just reverts things back to 2K but not a big deal. I'll go to the wireframe bring this in here as well. Invert it and from here I'm going to do a quick setup. This is just a setup that I like to do. Uh, just something I've done always. So I'm going to grab the edge and expand it by 10 pixels. And then fill the background of this and something not exactly 100% black. And at the very bottom, underneath everything, do a 50% gray. This is just my personal preference. And then I don't need this anymore. So now I have a pretty good border with a, an edge bleed and then my UVs on top. So this is my traditional setup for a PSD. Which is good. So I can close these. And now I'm ready to start. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start building up the sclera. And so I'm going to grab my original image here. Paste it in. I'm just going to place it in the general proximity, like so. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this sclera Just do a quick and dirty uh, clean. 
clone stamping and patching things up. So I have the placement of my iris, but I just want to get the uh, sclera to bleed out more very quickly. Because uh, truth be told, we're not going to see too much of this. So it's okay that we get some of these veins repeating. Um, if you want, you can fade some of them back. They're a bit more obscene. But for the most part, uh, it's pretty forgiving. So I'm actually going to take this again and move this all the way around. Like so. And then I can fade some of this back just to get some of the original detail back in. As you can see very quickly, I'm getting a really nice coverage of everything. Very quickly. Like so. I'm pretty happy with this. So we get nice full coverage around the eye. Awesome. Raise some of this back. And so this is the original projection. Um, let me check the resolution here. Actually, we didn't lose too much from that after the fact up res, this original projection. So I'm actually going to leave that. I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, with subsurface and all that, it's going to be fine. Because a lot of this is going to get softened anyway. So you need to... Uh, factor that in. Do some quick cleanup just to get some of this variation not so repeatable out. And there we go. So from here I'm going to grab this entire section like so. I'm going to bring that over here. Move that into place. And I'm just going to mask out the center piece to reveal the original iris and its placement. So as you may have remembered, when I projected this eye, I projected the exact same iris for both. So it's it's actually exactly the same, and we don't want that. Um, so it actually helped that I projected both of them because I didn't spend the time in the beginning to uh, figure out what the orientation of the uh, UVs were. So in Photoshop, based on this original projection, I know that even though these aren't actually oriented the same in Photoshop, when they are applied to the model they are actually exactly the same. So I want to keep that in mind when I start building my new iris because I want these to be different. Um, and it's a very easy trick. You just take one of the irises that you've completed, bring it to the other one, and rotate it. That's it. And I find that you get um, 
we were able to get the uh, asymmetry very quickly and uh, without a little, without that much hassle, which is really nice. So this is the basis for the buildup of our uh, sclera. And what I do is uh, very quickly, I'll just grab a paintbrush and clone the rest of it in. Because again, we're not worried about farther back because we honestly won't see any of this. It's just to fill it in so we have full coverage and not 100% gray. Towards the back. Doesn't have to be pretty. It's just to fill. And at this point, I'm not worrying about that reddening that you see. Um, a gradation of red towards the back of the eye. Uh, we can fold that in a little bit later. And I'd like to keep that separate anyway so I can dial it as needed. Um, because that can kind of cause a problem if we're wanting to uh, animate the eyes. And uh, if there's too of an extreme of a movement in the eye, if someone, if the character is looking too far to the left or the right with the eyes, um, this reddening is very obscene. And uh, you have to do a lot of things to fix that. So uh, keeping it separate is key in case you go that route with animating. So like I said, I'm not going to be too uh, meticulous about this. I just want to cover the back so there's something. And uh, you can fill in the back here, but honestly, it's not that necessary. Grab this and bring it over here. And there we go. So this is a nice base for the eye textures, for the sclera anyway. Um, from here I'm actually going to so I have a choice I can actually keep the same uh, iris and then fiddle with the colors or I can actually project a new iris um, but before I do that I want to center up this pupil because as you can see, it's very off-center here. So I'm going to do a quick cleanup to that. I'm just going to nudge this over a bit. Like so. It's much better placement. And then erase some of this out. Like so. Good. So the placement of that's much, much better. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. The reason the placement is off could be a lot of different factors. Uh, probably most commonly is the refraction of the cornea through to the iris. Um, it's causing a warping. So we want to center it up so we can do that later with shaders and things will look right. So I'm going to actually move this around a bit. get some breakup like so so now these are nicely centered good so from here I'm going to just save this 
as a starting point. And then let's bring it into Mari. Let's add a new layer. I'm going to import into the layer. I don't even remember what I called it. I think it's this one. Yep. Let's take a look. Awesome. So we're getting some really nice veining detail, some really nice edge around this iris. The pupils are more or less centered. Uh, and because we move this around a bit, we get this nice vein there. And this is all working really, really well. And as you can see, we don't see much see much past that side. So very, very quickly we get some really nice high res details in here. And I'm actually happy with these irises. I'm gonna change the color up a bit, but um, this is a pretty good base. Basis for what we want. So now let's go into the next section and we're going to do a little bit more cleanup to the eyes for the colors and then get them fitting in correctly with the current color maps that we've painted for the color, the mid, and the deep. And then we'll move into doing the secondary maps.